video update. <laughs> on my laptop and I came across that uh, nifty little intro that you just saw and realized I haven't done a video update all season long. Now if you've been following my blog you know that my fantasy previews have been on icenetwork.com this year so hopefully you've checked out a few of those. That's why I haven't been doing the video blog fantasy skating previews but with the Grand Prix Final just wrapping up and that part of the season closed I figured it's as good a time as any to do a quick video recap of the season thus far. Let's start with the ladies of the Grand Prix Final, but before we go any further, I would just like to send my deepest thoughts and prayers and condolences to Mao Sada and her family as they deal with the tragic loss of her mother. To be half a world away when you get the phone call only makes that more devastating, and my prayers are with her as she tries to recover and seek some comfort in the loss of her mom. And she is scheduled to compete at Japanese Nationals despite the loss, so Best wishes to her as she continues on what thus far had been a remarkable comeback season for her. Speaking of remarkable comebacks, Carolina Costner of Italy, what a season she has had, particularly when you think about where she has been in the past, and even more particularly, just last season. Her jumps were a disaster, her spins were a disaster, her choreography was not helping her in any way, and she was struggling with injuries. So to be back this year and to put out the programs that she has, which in my opinion are the best programs she's ever had, and to compete relatively clean programs in every event thus far this season, she's stronger than I've ever seen her. And while I myself have criticized the marks that she has received on occasion, I do think that she's having the best season that she's ever had. And that worked out well for her at the Grand Prix Final here, taking the gold and well-deserved in my opinion. However, some thought that Akiko Suzuki should have taken home that gold medal. And I think she's fabulous. She's a delight to watch. She has very, very strong programs but with character that suits her. She skates with so much joy and so much freedom and just uh, larger than life. But there were mistakes, there were issues that uh, allowed Carolina Costner to take that edge. But the rest of the competition was not quite what we expected. Elena Leonova ended up with the bronze medal. Uh, she has a fireball of a personality and we've kind of overlooked her a little bit this season because of the other young Russian phenoms like Elizaveta Tuktamishkova who I fully expected to win at this competition. She won both of her Grand Prix events the first time a junior skater has ever won both of their senior their, their first two senior Grand Prix events and she seemed to be miles ahead of the competition as far as consistency and confidence in her programs. However, she is still very, very young, and we saw that at the Grand Prix Final in Quebec City. Uh, she just struggled throughout. She wasn't herself. She didn't have the jumps. She didn't have the sparkle that we're used to seeing from her, and you saw a little bit of that, I'm really young and I've never done this before and I don't quite know how to handle the magnitude of the situation from her. So she ended up fourth in this competition. Um, but it was a shock to me because of how she's competed throughout the season thus far. Still, so much to be proud of in this season for her. Then there's Alyssa Sisney. And if you have ever paid attention to anything that I say, you know that I absolutely adore Alyssa Sisney. And I love her programs this year. There's something a little bit off this season. Now, we learned at the end of the, the event that Alyssa was skating hurt. She hurt an ankle or a, or a calf in a practice session while in Canada, and she skated anyway. And there was evidence of that. Her long program was not clean at all, and not at all what she's capable of, especially with what we've seen from her this season as well as last season. So that was a struggle for her. Um, it was disappointing to see her so upset, but if she was skating hurt, hopefully she can take a week off and recoup and be ready to go for nationals, because I think what she puts on the ice when she does it well is as good as anyone in the world. So best wishes, Alyssa. Speedy recovery. We all love you and are looking forward to seeing you at nationals. Well, if you were looking for fireworks in the competition in Quebec City, you certainly could find them in many different places, 
Number one, though, for me was the men's event, and I, I pretty much expected that to happen. The guys in this event are so strong, and they're so charismatic, and they're so different in their personalities and in their skating style that you knew you were going to get some great skates and some great competition. And that came in the form of Patrick Chan, Daisuke Takahashi, Javier Fernandez, and Jeremy Abbott, which, again, isn't necessarily unexpected, but the way things shook out wasn't quite what we had in mind. Patrick Chan took the lead in the short program, although he did try to pull a, a bit of a Midori Ito and jumped into the boards, literally. Uh, if you saw the video, you know what happened um, at the end of his quad toe, triple toe combination. However, he recovered and skated a brilliant short program. Daisuke Takahashi struggled. He struggled so much so that he was in fifth place after the short, which I didn't watch the programs live and I was shocked when I saw the placements. However, his programs are so strong that it wasn't necessarily all that significant that he finished fifth because the guys ahead of him have struggled often on the season as well. Jeremy Abbott's short program is to die for. I think this is one of his strongest programs to date because it showcases his personality, but it also showcases all of that difficulty and the technicality that's involved in not only the choreography artistically, but in the jumps and in the step sequences and in the spins. This program puts him on par with anyone else in the world, and that showed very strongly in this Grand Prix final. Javier Fernandez is my 2011-2012 figure skating season crush. He is absolutely adorable, and he has so much to offer. He does a better quad sal cow than anyone in the world right now, and his quad toe is only second to Patrick Chan when he hits it clean. However, Fernandez has hit those quads far more often than anyone else in this entire season. That said, it's not all about the quads. He does have so much personality and so much character. He lights up the rink when he steps on the ice, and he has programs this year and has worked with Brian Orser to really create the complete package, and they sell Javier Fernandez brilliantly. Struggled a little bit in the short. He's still not as consistent in that portion of the program. When he skates his long program, though, he has the audience on a string, and he knows it, and he works it, and it's fantastic to watch. Now, there were some issues with jumps at the end of the program. I think he gets a little bit tired still, but the changes from him in this season from last season are spectacular. And he proved once again why he deserved to be at this final and he deserves to be mentioned in the context of some of those greats that are in the world right now. Finished ahead of Jeremy Abbott, who had a, a, a tough time in some of the elements in the long program. That said, kind of jumping back to Jeremy for a minute. He did hit the quad toe in the long program. Jeremy, I'm very proud of you for that. It's nice to see that return to competition, and it was a beauty. If you didn't see it, go check it out, because it's fantastic. If he can get this program all worked out and all the kinks worked out by nationals, mm, it's going to be fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. This men's event was so much fun to watch because there were so many good skates. It came down to Patrick Chan and Daisuke Takahashi, who both skated very, very strong, long programs. They both had little mistakes. Now, there was a bit of a controversy on Twitter uh, between the scoring for Patrick Chan and the scoring for Daisuke Takahashi, and that has been an ongoing battle, and I would imagine it will continue to be an ongoing battle. Ultimately, what it comes down to is not the skaters, but the way the system works. Yes, there were some peculiar low scores for Daisuke Takahashi in the program components segment from one judge. However, there seemed to be one judge that was marking everyone much lower than anyone else. Undeservedly so. But the fact is, the way that the system works, it's going to reward some things that make the point difference in a way that isn't evident and that a lot of people don't think is fair. In this particular instance, Patrick Chan won the long program by 1.04 because of the spins, because of the levels and because of the grade of execution that he got on the spins. That one element won him the long program. Now, he did have a 10-point lead after the short, which made it look much more dramatic than it really was, but that was the element that won him the long program, and that's not something that a lot of people are going to be sitting and analyzing and saying, well, his spins were two points better than Daisuke Takahashi's. 
but that's the way the system works. Don't fault the skaters, fault the system, and it does have its faults, but we can all agree on the fact that these are both brilliant skaters who put brilliant programs on the ice, and at Worlds, one goes clean, one doesn't, the clean skater wins every time, and that's what you love to see in this sport. I've been looking forward to this ice dance final all season long because of the matchup between Tessa Virtuous, Scott Moyer, and Meryl Davis and Charlie White. They train together all the time. We've seen them compete separately, and they are by far the best two ice dance teams in the world. But seeing them compete head-to-head -head is something spectacular because these two teams push each other. They make each other better in practice. And then when they step foot on competition ice, they take it to a whole other level. And it's unbelievable to watch. These two teams have elevated the level of dance in the last few years, so much so that right now they're the only two doing what they do. We'll get to them in a minute. First of all, I want to talk about Andrew Poget and Caitlin Weaver. They are having an amazing year. They have a free dance that grabs your emotions and pulls you in. And by the end of their free dance in Canada for the final, Caitlin was in tears. And I would bet that a lot of the audience was in tears, people watching, because they grab you emotionally. And that's something that so many dance teams, they can do all the technical steps, but they don't have that emotional impact. And that's something Caitlin and Andrew have worked on very hard this year, and it paid off. They are skating better than ever, and you really feel like they buy into what they're skating and what their programs are built around, and so you buy into it as well. They tend to be a little bit undermarked, in my opinion, particularly in the short dance. Um, she's fierce in that short dance, in that little uh, tiger stripe sequin getup that she's got going on. Um, and they, they, they have so much fun with that short dance. Um, but I, I tend to feel like they are a little bit undermarked, and I've always thought that. Um, I've always seen that in their results, but the marks are irrelevant in one extent because they skated brilliantly, and they made an impact on so many people, and they've taken their skating to another level. They did get personal best marks here, so they can take that with them as they head into nationals and, and worlds and four continents and wherever they may end up throughout the rest of the season. Um, but kudos to them for putting together two great performances back-to-back -back in front of a Canadian crowd that just adores them. It was remarkable to watch. Natalie Pechala and Fabian Borzat, on the other hand, have two strong programs. I feel like they're a bit disjointed, and they lack some of the finesse that uh, Caitlin and Andrew showed. The judges clearly disagreed with me on that, but Pechala and Borza are that third team in the world right now. They are the team that everyone thinks is just on the edge of getting up to that Davis and White, Virtue and Moyer level, and they haven't been able to make it to that mark. I think They've taken a step back this year with their choreography um, from where they were at last year. Their Charlie Chaplin routine was phenomenal. It was one of my favorite programs of the year. And this year, their, their Mummy Free Dance doesn't show the overall quality that you would like to see in the top teams in the world. However, they have fancy tricks. They do a lot of things as far as intricate entrances and exits to lifts to footwork to spins. All of those things add up the points and they maintain the character all the way through which helps in that program component mark. So good for them, bronze medal here, but they're really not at the same level emotionally as some of the other teams this year. Specifically with Tessa Virtue, Scott Moyer, these two are so brilliant in what they do. And yet, I feel like this year, they're almost scrambling to make up for lost time from last year. We saw Davis and White last year progress so dramatically with that tango free dance from the beginning of the season to the end of the season. Tessa and Scott didn't have that. So they're almost scrambling to catch up from all of last year to where Meryl and Charlie are this year. And they're very close. They're so, so close. Scott fell in the short dance here, which cost them overall. They were about five points down after the short dance to the Americans, Davis and White, who skated a brilliant short dance. They have so much fun, and they engage the audience, and you feel like it's over before it, it, it should be over. It goes by so quickly, and that's when you know that it's a good dance. 
every time I watch these two, Meryl and, and Charlie dance, whether it's their samba or their waltz in the free dance, I keep thinking, you know, these two would be brilliant ballroom dancers because their lines are perfect. Their expression is so effortless and they're so engaged with each other and with the audience and with the music. They're so in tune exactly with what needs to be done. And these programs highlight them at their best. And that's where their programs separate them from Tessa and Scott. Their Funny Face program is great. It's brilliant in its own right. But I think it would have been brilliant for them two years ago and not now. It doesn't scream Olympic champion. It doesn't scream world champion. And it doesn't highlight the finesse and that sweeping elegance that they tend to have it shows their character and it shows their personality and particularly with Scott it's great to see but I don't think it shows them at their best and they're going to have to be at their best to beat Marilyn and Charlie who are also at their best right now this event at Worlds is going to be the showdown of all showdowns because the scores between these two teams are neck and neck they are decimal points away and that makes it anyone's game. And every time they come back to the ice, when Meryl and Charlie had a 109 season best, Tessa and Scott posted a 112. So what did Meryl and Charlie do? Posted a 112 point, whatever it was, to take the title by that much. That's an exciting event, and I can't wait to see more. I know I'm going on a bit, but I can't end this discussion about the Grand Prix Final without talking a little bit about the pairs. This weekend we saw some of the greatest pairs programs that we have seen in a long time, in years even, and that's thanks to some brilliant skaters, current world champions and potential world champions, come world championship time this season. Aliana Sevchenko and Robin Sulkowy are the reigning world champions and well deserved. We've seen that from them at times this season, but they've been inconsistent. They've tried to incorporate that throw triple axle into their programs, and they've been unsuccessful thus far. So they removed that from their programs here at the Grand Prix Final, and what they do technically is brilliant. They're so strong, and they're so creative, and they make everything so much more difficult with entrances and exits and little twists here and changes of positions there. And that gains them points, but it also makes their programs very interesting to watch, and that's a lot of fun to see. Yuko Kavaguti and Alexander Smirnov are the team that's been neck and neck with Sevchenko and Sulkowy this season. They've competed head-to-head -head twice already, and each time a different one, different team won. So that made it difficult to predict, for one thing, but it also made it difficult to, to have an idea of who the better team is. Now, here in Quebec City, at the Grand Prix Final, Kavaguti and Smirnov skated well, but not without flaws. And I said before the competition that there's no room for error in this pairs event at this point, because there are three top teams, any one of them on any given day could win. And Kavaguti and Smirnov are one of those teams, but they didn't live up to that here. They had some little issues here and there, and they just didn't have that overall air of excellence that we've seen from them at other times in the season. Their Russian counterparts, however, now, I'm not an expert in, in Russian, so forgive me if I mispronounce her name, but Tatiana Volosazar and Maxim Trenkov are a team that appeared on the season last year and skated at Worlds brilliantly. I fell in love when I saw them because I think they have something that's very special, plus their technical elements are huge. Their throw triple, uh, their split triple twist is phenomenal. It's as high as anyone in the world and it's beautiful when it's done cleanly. However, they have been a bit inconsistent at times this season. Here, though, their short program was stunning. And what I love about them is that, again, they do something that's a little bit different. Skating to music that's unusual, in costumes that are not typical for pairs skaters, doing a more modern choreography, um, doing things that engage the audience, and you can tell there's a connection between the two of them throughout. Their free skate, the Black Swan, there are a lot of Black Swan programs this year. I happen to like theirs. It's very dramatic and in, in some ways very Russian, but they skate it with 
a passion that's electric. And that makes all of the moves that they do, that are big and flashy and bold, even more intense because there's a meaning behind it and there's a purpose for what they're doing and there's a story that they're telling. And when it all comes together, it's beautiful. This was an event that they thought they had won. I will say that. When they led up to the short program, they skated a clean free skate. They thought they had it won. And when they lost this just by tenths of a point, you could tell they were disappointed. <coughs> However, that could lead to motivation for them at the World Championships. And while Savchenko and Solkowy are never easy to beat, it's not easy to defend a title either, uh, especially when you have someone like Tatiana and Maxim who are so hot on your heels, and Yuko and Alexander who have been at that pinnacle at an earlier point in the season and are trying to get back to that mark. So brilliant skating from the pair of skaters here, and uh, again, there should be some fireworks come Worlds, and it'll be a lot of fun to watch, and as always, nearly impossible to predict. Well, there you have it. The Grand Prix Final in a large nutshell, but a nutshell nonetheless. And my first video blog of the season. Now that we're kind of at that halfway point between the Grand Prix series and nationals, Europeans, worlds, four continents, all of those events, we have a little bit of breathing room. We have a little, about a month before anything else really happens. And in that month, I know that a lot of you will be celebrating the holidays with family and friends. My family's coming in for Christmas, and it's my favorite time of the year. So I'm excited to take a little breather and s spend a little bit of time celebrating Christmas with my family and friends. And I hope you all have a wonderful month off and a wonderful holiday season. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you in January. Thank you.